Remember that the formulas we had, which we had derived for the time of flight, the range, and the maximum horizontal height were valid when we had assumed the particle was projected from a horizontal surface. Now, to find the time of flight, the range, and the horizontal maximum horizontal height attained by the particle when it is projected from certain height, we'll have to do some manipulations, or we'll be solving it either using the basic equations of kinematics or we'll solve it some in some other way so okay so let's begin with the projectile which has been projected from certain height so suppose we have a project we have this is the height right and the projectile has been projected from this case which makes an angle alpha with the horizontal direction which makes an angle theta with the horizontal direction so the particle will follow certain path like this and finally, it will drop here. This is the horizontal surface. It has been projected from certain height. Right. Again, here also we will choose two perpendicular directions. And independently we will solve the equations of motion in both the directions. The in this case also the force acting will be only the gravitational force which will be acting downward. In the horizontal direction there is no force the point of projection we choose it as origin right in this case also the equation of trajectory remains the same that is y equals to x tan theta minus gx square by 2 u square cos square theta but in this case also the equation of trajectory x tan theta minus gx square by 2 u square cos square theta. This is the equation of trajectory. But remember, this is not equal to x tan theta 1 minus x by r in this case. Because the range of the particle is not equal to u square sin 2 theta by g in this case. Because the range would have been u square sin 2 theta by g if the particle, if we had only considered the time till the particle was at the same height, vertical height. Now the particle has some extra time to fall to the ground and so in that extra time it will cover some extra horizontal distance. So the range of the particle is different in this case. So this equation is valid but this equation is not valid in this case. Okay. So to find the range of the particle we have to go to our basics. We will have to solve the equation of motion of the particle in the vertical direction, we will get the time of flight of the particle, the time the particle takes to fall down and from there, we will calculate the range of the particle. This is one case. The other way of solving this is, let us divide the motion into two parts. Let us assume, let us assume that this is one part of the motion in which the particle comes to the same vertical height and this is the rest part, rest part of the motion. Now for this part of the motion, for this part of the motion, all the equations which we have derived earlier are valid because for this part, this is the horizontal surface, it is projected from the same horizontal, come back to the same horizontal surface. So all the formulas are valid. So we can calculate the time of flight taken by the particle to reach this position, the range for this position, for the, the height from this position, from those equations. and to calculate for this extra part, what we can do is, I know the vertical velocity of the particle at this position, which will be the, which, uh, which the vertical velocity at this position will be the same as the vertical velocity at this position, only there will be change in sign. So, I know the vertical velocity of the particle at this position, I know the height, so I can calculate the time of flight, uh, time taken by the particle to, to cover this distance vertically, and the total time taken by the particle will be addition of this time plus this time. So, this is the Second approach, while solving the questions on projectile motions projected from a certain height, will I'll first I'll show you how both methods are will means conclude to the same answer. Okay. So here also the the x component will be given by u cos theta t, the y component will be given by u sin theta t minus half times gt square, right? 
this equation remain valid because these two are the basic equations of kinematics now while we are solving problems on projectile motions which are projected from certain height the sign convention becomes very important we should stick to the sign convention we are taking so if the sim generally what convention we take is we take this direction as positive in the horizontal direction in the vertical direction this direction we take as positive right to now let's see how we calculate the time of flight let this height be h now to calculate the time of flight of the particle we will consider the vertical motion so when the particle reaches this position what is the displacement of the particle in y direction the displacement of the particle in the y direction is the displacement of the particle in the y direction is minus h right this minus sign the negative sign is there because we have taken the upward direction as positive and the particle has been displayed in the displaced in the downward direction so the displacement of the particle is minus h now this is equal to from this equation u sin theta t minus half g t square remember here also we have a negative sign because the acceleration of gravity is acting downwards now from this equation from this equation i'll get the value of time t which is equal, will be equal to the time of flight remember from this equation you can see this is a quadratic equation so we will we should get two values of time but two values of time are not acceptable because it's not acceptable because the particle can't be here at two times right if you are projecting a particle it will be have here it will be here at some time so generally you'll see if you solve this equation you will get one of the times as negative and the other you'll get positive so we'll take the positive time so from here i'll get time of flight by solving this quadratic equation to find the range of the particle what we will do is we'll multiply u cos theta into t this is the range of the particle and to calculate the maximum height attained by the particle which is this in this case for to find this what we'll do is we'll divide the motion into two parts let the motion be divided into two parts which i had already said let i consider the particle coming till here only so if the particle comes till here only what is the displacement of the particle the displacement of the particle in the y direction is zero right and this becomes similar to the we had uh, the case which we had already discussed earlier in which the particle was projected from a horizontal surface it lands up to the same horizontal surface in that case the maximum height attained which is small h was given by u square sin square theta by 2g so this is h so what will be the total height let it be h capital ma h dash h dash will be then small h plus h so this is the height attained by the particle okay now having discussed so much on projectile motion projected from a height now let's move on to solving problems on projectile motion where the particle has been projected from certain height